One of the cool things about bird banding is its sheer versatility. Birds of nearly any size can be banded with the proper equipment, providing valuable science about species that might otherwise go understudied. Here, we're banding one of the smallest birds there is. A hummingbird. A ruby-throated, specifically. They're very common east of the Rocky Mountains, to the point that they're the only kind of hummingbird you'll find in that region. Capturing it involved setting a manually activated trap at one of our nectar feeders. It was a time-consuming affair, but if there's one thing you learn in this line of work, it's patience. The bands used for hummingbirds are absolutely tiny, as is probably expected. You'd need a very precise scale to even get them to register. They need to be as small as possible to eliminate any chance they'll get in the bird's way. After banding, we perform all the same measurements we do on any other bird, from weight and age estimation to wing length and feather wear. The difference being that we're doing it all on a bird that weighs about 3 grams. It's a bit mind-boggling to imagine everything that makes a bird crammed into that tiny frame. It's hard to imagine the hummingbirds are even birds. The brain just files them away as large insects. But they're probably one of the most heavily specialized birds out there, and being able to see them up close like this is a real treat. Banding them like this allows us to gain more information about their migration, movements, and survival from year to year, and doing so on a long-term basis lets us understand how their population is changing in response to our rapidly changing world. In the meantime, you can help hummingbirds by planting native wildflowers or providing homemade nectar as food. A 4 to 1 solution of water to white sugar meets their needs and can be easily made. Hummingbirds can starve to death in as little as a few hours, so providing that small bit of extra food can make a critical difference.